hey what's up i've been working a little bit on the next songs for humanity animation again our lovely little boat ends up in a rainy weather but it doesn't lose its optimism So yeah, that's where the animation is currently. And I thought we could take a look at the umbrellas, because while they are quite simple and they're not very realistic, uh, they're built in an interesting way using a couple different modifiers. So let's get started. So what I was looking for was the simplest way of making a somewhat okay looking umbrella opening animation. And the first idea I had was to make a shape like this, and then make a shape key for it that would look like this. And then I would just animate this value here. And yeah, it somewhat works, but I immediately got annoyed by the fact that the outside moves in a straight line, like this. When it of course should move in a somewhat circular line, to be more believable. And I came up with the solution using the screw modifier here. So let's start with a fresh file and I'll show you how to set up a nice and simple umbrella. We can start by deleting everything from the default scene. And let's add a new object, mesh and a single vertex from here. You might not have all these extra options down here. If you don't, you just need to activate the extra objects add-on and you can find it from edit, preferences, add-ons and extra, extra objects. Just enable that and you can then find the single vertex objects here. So we have our single vertex object here. And if we go to the edit mode, we can go to the top view and then extrude along the x-axis, like this. So now we have an object that consists of a vertex in the origin position and another vertex down here. And then we'll go back to the object mode and to the modifiers panel here. And let's add the screw modifier that I was talking about earlier. So what this screw modifier does is it takes the original object, which is this line here, and it sort of extrudes and rotates it and adds faces in between. And the rotation happens along the origin point of the mesh, which is here. So if we now change this to 360, like it was in the beginning, it goes a full circle and adds 16 points along the way. And for our umbrella, we want eight. So we'll put that to both the steps and the render steps. And we also don't want the smooth shading, so we'll disable that from here. And now when we move this vertex around, you can see that we have nice control over the cone shape of this object. So what we can then do is we can snap the 3D cursor to this vertex here, go to object mode, add an empty object, plane axis, maybe make the axis a little bit smaller here. And with this empty object selected, shift click the umbrella object and go to edit mode so that the empty object is still selected in the background. And then make sure that this vertex is selected and press Ctrl H to hook the vertex to selected object like this. And now if we go to the object mode and select this empty here and move it, you can see that the vertex is binded to this object and we can use this empty as a controller for the umbrella. And then if we snap the cursor to world origin, which also happens to be the origin of this umbrella, and add another empty, maybe a sphere, just to make it easier to click. Make this also smaller. And what we can now do is we can parent this empty to this another empty in the center here by Control P and set parent to object. And now if we select this center empty here and rotate it along the Y axis, you can see that we have the nice circular motion that I was talking about earlier but it's still very flat and we of course want that nice curve for the umbrella like this and we can do that with a couple other modifiers so let's select this umbrella again and go to the modifiers tab and you might be wondering what's this hook modifier here so that came when we did the control h thing to hook to selected object what that does is it actually just adds this hook modifier from here you can also add it manually and then assign different vertices for it but this Ctrl H shortcut is just an automated way to do the same thing. Anyways, we can now hide this hook also here and add a new modifier, subdivision surface. 
And this needs to be before the screw modifier, so we can just click this up arrow here to move it in the middle here. And let's subdivide, say, four times. What this modifier will now do is it will subdivide this single edge here so that it has more vertices in the middle here also. We need those extra vertices because we're going to add another modifier, a simple deform modifier, from here. And this also needs to be before the screw modifier, like this. And we can now hide this subdivision for now. And you can do four different kinds of deformations with this simple deform modifier. We are going to use the bend for this umbrella and we'll change the axis to Y. And nothing seems to be happening right now because this object is perfectly flat. I don't know if it's a bug or something, but apparently the mesh needs to have some variation along both the X axis and the Z axis because we're now trying to bend around the Y axis. I don't know if that made any sense whatsoever, but what it means in practice is that we just need to rotate this controller a tiny bit like this. And now the bend happens as is expected and we can change this deform angle here to however we like and maybe something like this would be good and yeah now it's looking more like a real umbrella and if we rotate this controller along the y-axis we still get this nice looking opening and closing animation you just need to be careful not to rotate this controller to the other side because the bend direction flips around when the controller object's y rotation moves into the negative digits if you keep it in the positive digits, it's okay. And it's actually very easy to enforce that for the controller object by adding a constraint from here. Add object constraint, uh, limit rotation from here, limit Y, and a minimum of 0 0.01 and a maximum of, let's say, 80 degrees. And let's also enable this for transform here and convert this to local space. So now if we rotate this again, we can see that the constraint limits us from going beyond that 0 0.01 uh, degrees. And it's 0 0.01 instead of 0, so that we always have that little variation along the z-axis, so that the simple deform modifier always works. Down here, we can see that the umbrella gets bent a little too much. So we'd like to decrease the bending amount when the controller rotates all the way down here. And we can do that with a driver expression, so let's do that next. So when the controller is all the way down here, we want this uh, deform angle to be zero, basically, like this. And when the controller is rotated up here, we want the deform angle to be minus 25, like this. We could just animate this value by inserting keyframes here at the same time that we are rotating this controller. But whenever it's possible and practical, I like to have my animations controlled by as few objects as possible to make it easier to track and modify. So instead of animating this deform angle, we're going to add a driver to it. And that driver is going to be controlled by this rotation Y value of this controller object. So we can right click this and copy as new driver. And then go to the deform angle value here, right click and paste driver. And now if we go right click and edit driver, we can see that we have this rotation value from the controller object as a variable here that we can use. So if we change this driver type to scriptive expression, we get this expression field and it automatically puts this rotation variable to be the expression. So if we now rotate this controller, it doesn't work like we want it to work. It's perfectly flat up here and adds bending as we go down, but in the wrong direction. And to fix that, we need to modify the expression of this driver here. And you don't actually need to go to the edit driver window here. You can just click this and it puts the expression here to be edited straight from this field here, which is very convenient. And as a test, let's put minus 25 here because we want the value to be minus 25 degrees when the controller is upright. But what happens is we get this crazy amount of angle here, minus 1400 degrees. And that's because this angle field really works in radians under the hood and not degrees. So let's test something like minus one. That's still too much. Minus 0.5, that equals to minus 28 degrees. Minus 0.44 is quite close to the angle we originally had here. 
So that's our starting point. But how do we now decrease the bending amount when we rotate this controller? If you look at the rotation y value of the controller, it's almost zero here upright. And then if we bend this, it rotates into the positive direction along the y axis. So what we can do is we can go to the expression here and just add the rotation variable after this initial state that we defined. And that expression will result in this funny looking behavior where it decreases the bending amount a bit too quickly. So it's already straight here and then it bends in the other direction as we go downwards. So that's no good obviously, we need to slow it down a little bit and we can do that simply by dividing this rotation variable by 3. So now it will decrease the bending a bit slower. So if we rotate this again, you can see that the umbrella is almost perfectly straight when the controller is rotated all the way down here. And then when we rotate it back up, it gets bent very nicely. So that's the driver done. We have a very nice controller behavior just with one object here. And we can add a little bit of convenience for this controller by locking the other rotation axis from here so that it's only able to rotate along the y-axis, so we don't have to specify the axis every time we rotate it. Also, what you want to do is to parent the controller to the umbrella. Set parent to object, keep transform. So now when you move the umbrella, the controllers come with it, and you can also rotate it, and it works in any orientation, which is super nice. So just to finish it up, let's model a simple handle for it. So move this up a little bit. Add a cylinder, scale, shift Z, scale down, something like this. Move this part up, control R to add a loop cut. Move it up here, select these and scale them down to have a pointy end up there. Move this bottom part up a little bit, something like this. Let's maybe make everything a little bit thinner still, something like that. Go to a side view and let's make a simple handle for it. Select only these vertices, extrude, release, scale up a bit, extrude and move down, something like this. Shift plus right mouse button to reposition the 3D cursor. And then select the spin tool from here and make sure that the axis is correct for you in the settings here. So that you can see this curved operator from here. Then just grab the operator and spin about 90 degrees like this. W to change back to the selection tool. Control B to add a little bevel to the end. Scroll the mouse wheel to add more points. Maybe also add a bevel here. And we have an umbrella. Whoops. Looks like we need to increase the uh, minimum rotation value here just a tiny bit because of the driver. Yeah, now it works properly. And yeah, that's our umbrella done. Very nice. Okay, so I was going to end the video there, since this is what I did in the Songs for Humanity animation that I showed in the beginning. It was enough for that specific need that I had in that animation, but then I got kind of curious about if I could somehow fake some of the folding of the fabric as the umbrella closes. And I started tinkering around and I actually came up with a solution. But since this video is already long enough as it is, I'll just show you the sort of the general overview of what I did to get that effect. But anyways, let's quickly look at the folding. So what I have right now is this. If I close this umbrella, you can see that the fabric kind of looks like it folds in a little bit as it closes. It's still not very realistic, especially here in the middle parts. But it's a lot better than what we had before when it was just straight polygons down here. And what I did to get this is I first modeled this weird shape and I made a custom shader for it, which basically turned it into a height map of sorts. And then I rendered that height map from above like this. You can sort of imagine this shape as being the umbrella and these white parts are the folds that come out when the umbrella closes. And then I used that height map in a displacement modifier here. And I control the strength of the displacement modifier with the same controller Y rotation value as I did with the other parameters also. And to get the displacement working, I obviously had to subdivide the umbrella mesh after the screw modifier so that I got some actual geometry between these original edges of the umbrella shape.
And then I also added some smoothing modifiers and a little bit of a noisy displacement just to break up the very uniform shape just a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I really like how this turned out. I like the look of this opening and closing animation. And I like the fact that it's not really all that complicated. It's just a bunch of simple modifiers on a simple mesh. So that's a tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.